In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to take some artwork like this and apply a contour cut line around it. So we can then send it over to our vinyl cutter and contour cut the artwork. But first we have to print that artwork out and even before that stage we need to create the contour cut line. So to do that, we simply draw a marquee over the artwork like this. We can come up and click on this button up here. Create Cut Contour. I'll click on that. And this window comes up. And we're presented with this option here to actually trace this image. So we click Yes. The program will go ahead and trace that for us, like so. And then we're presented with these options here. Now, build contours or build boxes. If this was a square shape, we might want to check build boxes just to create square shapes around uh, square shapes or circle shapes, etc. But in this particular case, we're actually interested in building some contours around this artwork here. So we have these options here of build contours. So we select that. Uh, we can change our corner styles and we can set our outlines. So the first thing I want to do is I'll just show you how to do that. So as you can see, as I increase this, you can see how this grows, like so. And uh, that's the sort of effect I'm looking for. I also have this option here to keep holes. You can see there's a little hole here. Now, you may want to keep that, you may not. That really is up to you. I'll check that off for now. Uh, our contouring is including these images, as you can see. Uh, it's in, you can include the effects. This depends on the sort of effects you have. Um, and this background sensitivity here, what that's talking about is sometimes you'll have artwork that's got lots of grey areas in it, like light greys and um, uh, shadows and things. You may have to adjust this up or down to uh, be able to outline that accurately. So that's what that's about there. But for this particular lesson, we're just mainly interested in just creating this contour cut line as we can see. So once we've got that, we click Accept. And it loads back into the uh, designing area, as you can see there. And the contour cut outline is represented by this uh, light blue dotted line, as you can see. So now that we've done that, we're now ready to uh, prepare this artwork for our printer and for our cutter. Now we do that up here on the, this uh, button here, Contour Cut Wizard. So we click on that, and the Contour Cut Wizard uh, comes up. And it presents us with some uh, options here on the left and a preview over here on the right. Now in the preview, I can actually change my view by clicking on these tabs down here like so. And I can see where my marks are going to be located uh, for my automatic uh, registration machine, which we call ARMS. Um, I can select my cutter here from this drop-down list and I can set it to uh, manual mode, so that's if I've got a, uh, a vinyl cutter with a laser pointer um, and then I would have to actually adjust the uh, or set the position using another uh, wizard, the Align Cut File wizard. But at this point in time we're talking about automated machines, so we're interested in this automatic system here and we get these options here, these default settings um, and this will just depend on what sort of um, accuracy you're looking for as far as the offset goes. The default setting is usually fine. Um, the more advanced settings, I'll talk about those in the next lesson uh, and we'll talk about how we can adjust those. But for normal contour cutting uh, artwork like this, the default setting is fine. Here we ha come down to the printing device. So we have some options here. We can print directly to our um, the printer that we've currently got. We can uh, print it as a PDF file. The reason why we may want to do that is just because we want to actually rip the file. So you'd create a PDF file and then you'd send it to your large format printer using its own rip. Or you can save the PDF. Again, that's also for large format printing. Um, you may have someone who's got a large format printer that's going to print it out for you. This is where you'd use save to PDF. Um, and then we have some more advanced options down here. I'll come back to those in a moment. Right now, I just want to show you how the Save to PDF works. So we click Save to PDF. We select a name for, or give a name to the particular PDF file and click Save. And if we do that, we'd end up with something that looks like this, which is the same artwork in a uh, PDF uh, file. And I've just loaded this in PDF Reader or Adobe Reader. And you can see it's uh, going to print out the marks for us and it's going to print out the actual artwork, but of course no contour cut line because that's what we're going to do with our own cutter. So once we've got our PDF file, we can go and uh, print that out or send it to a large format printer via a RIP or on our, at our own place. It's entirely up to us. Um, and that's how we print out the artwork. So we go and print that off and we're, we're ready to go. So once we've printed that off, um, we now want to cut it out. So the stages for that are pretty straightforward. We just simply click Cut here and we can see that it loads into the Align Cut File Wizard. Now, when we get our uh, artwork, this artwork here that I showed you before, when we position this in the cutter, 
we have to make sure that it matches what we have in this preview here. So I've got these rotation options here as you can see here. So it's just very important that you match the rotation here with the way you've actually placed it in your cutter. The next thing we need to do is make sure that the um, the laser is actually put in this bottom right hand corner uh, using the, um, the up and down arrows on the cutter and we click origin on the cutter so that it knows that it's in this position here. Um, and once we've done that, we've loaded it into the cutter, we've positioned the laser over the bottom right hand corner here and we've clicked origin on the cutter, we're now ready to send this to cut. So we click start and when this module comes up you can see it shows us a preview of the cut file we've got here and the marks that we're going to uh, scan in a moment and this is our start position here. Now there's some things you need to know about this section here. You've got this laser sensitivity adjustment. Now what this is talking about is how accurately the laser uh, uh, pointer um, can actually find the marks. The reason why we have this adjustment or the sensitivity adjustment is because some media behaves differently than others. So between 10 and 15 will cover most normal media. Uh, your, your, your standard type vinyls and um, your more matte uh, like canvases and things like that. So that's where you'd normally set it and you can adjust it here using the spin control. If you've got very high gloss media um, you may want to set it down to as low as 8 uh, to allow for the sensitivity of the, the laser scanning the particular media you've got. Um, we can adjust the mark detection method. Uh, this is also about accuracy. Uh, and the amount of times that it actually will go around and actually scan these marks for us. Um, and this tells us some information about the job we're working with. These settings here are the, um, the offsets. Now that's the distance between the blade and the laser uh, itself, the laser sensor. Uh, there's a lesson on calibration which you should really do before you do any contour cutting. You need to calibrate the machine so go ahead and uh, watch the calibration lesson and um, uh, then run the uh, practice sheet lesson just so you make sure you got your calibration correct. Okay so once we're ready to go we just simply click scan. We're uh, presented with this uh, option to, to go ahead we click yes and as you can see it goes ahead and it scans those marks and it'll take a few moments to do that. Once we're happy with the, the results and it's all looking good we click yes and um, it's off and done. So if that's all, uh, if, you, if your machine's calibrated correctly and you've sent that off, you should get the, uh, a very accurate result like you can see here. Okay, another thing I want to touch on is sometimes you have artwork like this, but you actually want to print it directly, as I was talking before. So before we just saved it as a PDF, but sometimes you might want to print it direct. So here, if I select Print Direct and I've got my Epson printer that I'm going to send this to, you can see here that the actual cut file, or the artwork, is too wide for the printer. It simply doesn't fit. The way around that is this full width option here. So if I check full width, you can see what happens is it actually brings the marks to be in line with the artwork. So if I turn that off, you can see it doesn't fit. If I turn that on, you can see it does fit. So that's very important uh, to know about uh, that full width option. That lets you um, print your artwork to the extent of your um, page that you're, or the paper you're printing on or the vinyl or whatever it is to fit into the machine to get the maximum um, media use. So that's the idea of full width there. The other thing that um, you can do is actually position this uh, artwork. So if I go to print options here, you can see I can position it up and down. So you can actually set where you want it to print um, on the actual uh, media in the, in the printer. Uh, if I turn that to manual, I can actually move that around manually there as well. And I can type in the measurements I want. Or I can just reset it back to where it was originally. So that's how you move the artwork around individually. The other thing too that you should be aware of is tiled copies. It's a little bit pointless uh, making lots and lots of copies of this in the designing area and then bringing it into the contour cutting wizard because you're just stretching your resources. What you're far better off doing is checking tiled copies down here and we get these options here to increase the numbers that we have. And as you can see here I can actually um, increase the numbers, I can make it one or two or depending on my page size of course, I mean obviously if I'm doing it as PDF. I can, I can fit many more in because I may have a large format printer. If I'm printing directly then I have less options uh, if my printer is a small printer. But this will depend on what you're working with. With this small artwork I can get a couple of these in. I can actually move these marks in by changing the position here. So I could say make it uh, 0 0.25 here and I can bring those marks in. But beware, if you do that 
you may find that your artwork will actually cut into the marks. So you need to be very aware of that, that you would only do that if you're fully, or if you're actually able to, depending on the artwork itself. So that's on an artwork by artwork basis, whether or not you're actually, you can actually do that. So that's the end of this lesson. Thanks for watching. Thank you.